Nikon loaned us a Z5 full frame mirrorless camera for a few months. Like always, they, like all the brands that I work with, are super cool about this. There aren't any talking points or secret handshakes or anything like that. Raymond and I try it out, out in the real world, and we tell you what we think. Why do we do it? For one, cameras like the Z5 are the ones that many of you ask me about frequently and I like to have answers for you. And two, we love cameras and it's just darn fun to take them for a test drive. Quick interruption, members, make sure that you check out the member exclusive video this week. In it, I share my latest printing experiment, a camera bag making project that I've come up with, and I answer a member question about sensor size. There is a link below to find that video, as well as an additional link to learn more about channel membership so that you can see those members only weekly videos, along with my long form photography courses, and you can learn about the other benefits membership provides at that link. But all right, back to the Nikon Z5. In the case of the Z5, we're well equipped. Nikon did send us the kit lens, more about that in a few minutes. And since we have a Z7 and the crop sensor Z50, and we used to also have the Z6, the visiting Z5 fits in here in the studio quite nicely. In fact, we'd be focusing on three no, actually five lenses with the Z5, the collapsible 24 to 50 millimeter kit lens, the 14 to 30 millimeter F4S Z lens, the 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 S Z lens, the 200 to 500 millimeter F mount lens using our FTZ adapter, and this Viltrox 20 millimeter F1.8 lens designed specifically for the Nikon Z mount. Along with too many other cameras, we took the Z5 on a couple of road trips to Durango, Colorado in August, and then San Diego, California in September. In fact, the Z5 would have quite a journey from mountains and lakes to the ocean and even the sky. It was quite the range of altitudes. From a still image perspective, the Z5 is a real all around monster in a small package. What makes the Z5 easy and fairly quick to review is what we have here many of the same qualities of the Z6 and Z7 in a package that more closely resembles the super compact Z50. And we have no complaints about any of that. The Z5's closest relative in the Z system is the Z6 with some key physical and electronic differences. The Z5 does address one of the top comments at launch regarding the Z system. The Z5 does have two memory card slots, specifically UHS-2 SD card slots. This is a first in the Z series, and I think Nikon may have taken the hint from some of the very vocal and persistent feedback from the initial Z series launch. I'm going to make a statement about this camera and the other Z series cameras. And we've owned three of the four, and now we have the fourth here in our hands. These are very good cameras. Every lens we've used from kit to pro lens has been fabulous. The color is next level compared to other brands though, I realize that's largely opinion-based. The usability is exactly what you'd expect from Nikon. While we persistently say that the Sony Alpha 7 R4 is the most advanced camera that we've used, because it is, the Z series bodies are true to Nikon's level of quality and performance. We've not met a Z body or lens that we didn't love using. Even the Z50, which was panned by many at launch, is a compact DX machine, really performing near or at the level of its full-frame counterparts. So in one sense, you could say that we're fans of the series, but it's an earnest title. It's not something that we just blindly decided. So all that said, this review is a thumbs up. <laughs> but I do want to make you aware of some of the differences that make the Z6 and Z7 just a little smug as they cast their glance upon the Z5. The Z5 is rated at four frames per second, while the Z6 and Z7 are rated at 12 and nine respectively. This is a substantial difference and even the Z50 checks in at 11 frames per second. Depending on how you shoot, this may be a big deal. It might be a deal breaker. That's totally up to you. Many of you asked me about image quality among the Z bodies. I can say with certainty that if I were to put an image in front of you captured with any of the three full frame Z cameras and maybe even the APS-C sensor Z50, you wouldn't be able to tell me which camera captured the photo. Certainly if you were pixel peeping, the Z7 would have the edge because of its high resolution sensor, but for most of you, for most photos, 
especially if you're using the top-notch S lenses for the Z series, you can be content knowing that you are getting the ultimate in image quality with any of the Z bodies. On to video. This is the real difference maker. All four Z cameras can do 1080p at 60 frames per second. All will do 4K at 30 frames per second, and that's perfectly acceptable. But there is a crop factor of 1.7x in 4K on the Z5. That is going to dramatically change the field of view of your lenses when you're working with video on the Z5. It's such a substantial crop that we're gonna say if video is key to you in your work, whether that be professional or personal work, the more expensive Z6 might be the better option for you. And to take it a step further, the Z5 does not enjoy 10-bit output over HDMI, nor does it have the 12-bit upgrade option available that can be purchased for the Z6 and Z7. We totally understand this. There's no point in Nikon producing a new, lower-cost, full-frame Z body that simply has the same features as the Z6 and Z7. I mean, I think we'd all love it if they did, but like all brands, they're going to introduce certain feature sets at certain price points. Given those compromises, though, especially for video, we don't consider the Z5 to be crippled or otherwise flawed. In fact, it's a great way to access the fabulous full-frame Z-mount lenses without spending as much as the Z6 or Z7, as long as you understand what you're getting and not getting when it comes to frames per second and differences in video features. Overall, if you're looking at the Z-mount, we can't say enough good things about this fairly young system. We currently own two of the bodies. We enjoy the lenses and the results. I will say that the Z5 seems focused on newcomers to the system, unless you're an existing Z system user, just absolutely craving two memory card slots for your still images. And Z50 owners, unless you're craving full frame, we'd probably say to stick with the Z50. None of that is a knock on the Z5, it's a great camera. It's just that all of the Z cameras are great cameras. Also, all four Z bodies are consistent in operation and capability, and Nikon has not hesitated to add additional features and performance boosts through firmware as they develop and refine features. They all have fantastic focus, and yes, Sony's autofocus tracking is more advanced, but Nikon's is still very good in these Z bodies. There is face and eye detection, reliable metering, and overall responsiveness. And those familiar with the Nikon system will be right at home with the menus and the terminology. And there's one final tangible item, the short flange distance of the Z system. That's the difference from the sensor to the lens mount. It allows the use of many other brands of lenses on cameras like the Z5, opening up creative mix and match possibilities that we had only dreamed about previously. We'll be talking more about our journeys with that in a future video and of course, more videos about the menus and configuration of the Z5 as well. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts about the Z5 in the comments below. I answer as many comments as I can, and since we still have some unfinished business with the Z5, you might just find your answers in some of my upcoming videos as well. As always, click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Those simple things are a huge help for the channel. Thank you for watching.